Hello and welcome to this training session of QQ Evolution. Today what we're going to do is we're going to cover our claims section and our claims can be accessed from our client store right here from the dashboard. So we're going to open clients. Do you see I already have John test highlighted so always make sure you have your client highlighted that you want to access and the reason I highlight my client first is because claims of course are always associated with the client. So I have John highlighted here and now I'm going to go ahead and click claims. As you see here, I already have a claim already set up here for John. All right, so let's go ahead and show you what you do if you want to do a new one. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on Add New. Now underneath here, before we click Add, you see there are different tabs here pertaining to our claim. And we are on the first tab here that says Claim Info. I'm going to go ahead and click on Add New. Now I can go ahead and type in the claim number here if I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in a little number here. And I can choose which policy it goes with. If the client had multiple policies, they'd all be listed here and you can choose which one. This client happens to have only one policy, so I'm going to choose it and hit OK. Now as you see that information, now we have information pre-filled for us. Here we have our claim number. Here's where we can choose our claim type. We do provide you with some default claim types as you see right here, but you're more than welcome to add your own because there's lots of different types. So I could click here and here are my claim types. I could click on add and let's do just test type. And I hit save and now that's one of my claim types. Okay, here is test type. Go ahead and hit close. So here I can click the drop down and choose my claim type. Let's see, let's say it has to do with, uh, let's see, vehicle theft full loss and here of course is our policy number we can change it if we need to at this point now since we put in our policy number the coverage and the line of business was automatically pulled over for us this is pre-filled you know based on what policy we choose underneath here if we happen to have an MJ or a company that would also have been brought over or I'm sorry an MGA right here that would have been brought over but there was no MGA but here we have company and that was pre-filled for me as well now we move over here to the middle and we have our claim status. And of course this is new claim, so we're going to assume it's open. If you click the drop down, you have is a claim status closed, declined, is it other, has it been reopened, was it segregated, is it unknown or is it voided? Okay. One thing I wanted to let you know, if you ever void a claim, it cannot be unvoided. Okay. We're going to leave this to open. Our next is, what date was the claim opened on? Okay, here's the claim created by, and it already defaulted to the user I'm logged in as. Okay, and that cannot be changed. Here is the date of loss. When was the loss, when was this claim reported? Or, I'm sorry, when was the this claim, when did this happen? Here's where we have the date reported. Now, this is when is the claim been reported. Is this chargeable out to the company? Also under if it's chargeable to the company, is this claim have to be in a dispute or is there pending? Is it pending a suit? Okay, is the suit pending on? We can check mark that if we need to. Now, did there happen to be any accident violations with this? If you'd like to keep track of this happen to have been some type of accident like um, and keep track of what violations. Of course, there's only certain violations that pertain to uh, claims. If I check mark there, I could put in my violation date as well as a violation type. If I click the drop down, here are generally the violation types that are associated with claims. If I need to, I can click on this little button and I can put in my individual claim amounts pertaining to the, um, to the violation. So I can put in my individual amounts if I need to. Over here to the right of that, we have what is the amount of the loss. We have the amount salvage, which is the um, scrap value of the damage value. We have the amount reserved, which is, of course, the maximum amount that the uh, company will pay. And here is if they've made, uh, the company has made payment, here's where you can enter the payment amount. Let's just go ahead and let's say $1,000 has been paid. After en enter payment, we have where you can put in a payment doc. What that is if, there, is if there's any kind of document number pertaining to this. Maybe there's a check number or some, you know, some kind of numbered document. You can enter that information here. And then here's where it shows the total amount paid. Under here in the middle, over to the left, we, here's where you can put in our information about our risk. Okay, you got a lot of room here to type a lot of information. Next to that, we have an incident description. You know, um, what had happened. Um, left at mall. Uh, back out after you know, two hours. Whoops, helps if I could spell today, huh? Two hours and gone. 
and uh, you know of course your description would be a lot better than that um, damage description of course I had chose uh, vehicle theft so there was no jam damage uh, damage description so I could answer none here um, it was it's a full loss it was taken it hasn't been recovered um, but you do have a place to put in damage description underneath here is where we put in the information where you can see what it claims that this uh, person happens to have as you see here's the one that I had done before whoops sorry I check mark this and as you see it gave me a message saying that this could not be left empty empty so I'm gonna check mark that down here where we have the um, as I said the preview of all the um, claims that the person has and if you want to switch claims you just simply select the other claim and it'll switch the information now moving next after the claim info tab we have the claim progress tab what this is going to do is you know show us all the progress made with the claim and we can also enter information here now I moved from one tab to another and I never saved the information I never updated it so it's telling me I didn't do that do I want to absolutely so I'm gonna answer yes and now it's gonna go ahead and it adds a memo because I created a claim so it wants a claim created a status set to open the date and the reserved amount and I can go ahead and type in additional information here if I want and this enters a memo for me in my memo section so I'm gonna hit OK and you see this memo now appears here okay here's as I said the claim progress so so far it said that the claim's been open and so on here's where we have the date today's date who's doing this claim the amount paid is pulled over and so would the payment document number be pulled over as well maybe I'd like to add to this maybe I want to click add new and I want to add a new memo some kind of comment um, called company um, will get back to me and I'm gonna hit OK and so now I just entered another another entry another memo in here pertaining to this and you can enter as many as you need to and then you can click on it and you can go ahead and you can append to it you can't change it you can't delete it or change your original text but I could click append and I can add to it actually let's do a little better here say add test we'll hit OK and now it added to it. It tells me it was modified on what date and by who and what I modified on it. Now next after this we have our forms. Now there are certain accord forms that are associated with claims. So up here if I go ahead and click on add new it's only going to give me this list of claims, claim forms. And there's basically four. Uh, this uh, fifth one here is uh, uh, particular to Wisconsin. So I can select my form, hit OK. The form is now going to appear so I can fill it out okay I'm just gonna put in some information here so now I can fill it out and when I'm done I just hit I can print this out right now if I'd like I hit return and now it's gonna save that this accord form for me it's gonna pop me back here to my claims and here's back on my form section here's my my uh, forms and I can have as many in here listed as I need to next after this we have images I'm gonna select images we can attach images here pertaining to the claim now these images the nice thing about these is they were able to be set up as what we would call they could be cached so what that means is after the first time you load it you can access it right away it won't have to be reloaded every time you come back in here and then in our utility section if I'm sure you've already covered that training session we explained that you can have your cache you know these images last in there for a certain amount of time like up to seven days and then it will dump them out and then when you come back in here the next time after their you know the cache images are taken out it would have to reload itself so it is pretty handy so that you can see the image all the time. You can set your cash out amount for as long as you far out as you'd like in the um, utilities. But remember, in order for us to have given you this feature and give you such fast, fast access to these um, images, we had to borrow a little usage on your local computer. So these cast, cached images are stored temporarily on your local computer. They are also on our server okay they're always on our server but in order to see them right away we had to store a copy of it on your local computer and if you don't empty them out periodically especially if you use a lot of images it's going to get built up on your computer and it does take up more memory on your computer okay so keep an eye on that that might be something that you might maybe want to uh, uncache the images you know every seven days every day maybe you want to do it every hundred days totally up to you so let's go ahead and let's find an image to attach here so we come up to the top here and here's our different um, different selections we can also scan into here if we'd like and scanning is covered in a, in a different training session but I'm gonna go ahead and click attach which means it's gonna allow me to browse my computer I'm gonna click on browse and I'm gonna find something for us to attach let's click the drop down here and let's see what I got I don't know what I really have in here much of anything let's see let's go ahead and let's attach right here 
and I can put in a description. I'm just put in test image for claims. As you see, this is grayed out because I am the user. You can't change it. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's going to upload my image. And it's going to attach it here. And here you go. Ooh, that was me when I was having a bad day. Couldn't remember things. It's just like I had a fog hat around me here. Um, so here now is my image. Now, to show you what I mean about it being cached, here it is. And let me go back out to the search screen. So I'm back out to the search screen. I'm going to go back to claims. Back to the image section. Now it helped if I chose the right image here. And now I just simply click on the image and boom, it's there. It doesn't have to reload it onto the computer. Okay. When it reloads it, it only takes a few, you know, a few seconds anyway. But you know, it just boom, it's right there for you. So you can put as many images as you like here, and you can also zoom on them and unzoom on them. Okay, I can see I double clicked on, I can see a larger version of this. I could also email this if I wanted to. I could click on print. And it's gonna, you know, where I can choose to print this, or I could choose the email from here as well. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I want to do that and click on return. Next up, we have our next session of, section of claims, which is adjusters. Now, it asked me when I come in the first time, would I like to add a new adjuster? Yes, I would. Now, here's why I'm going to go ahead and put in the name. Let's say this is test, middle initial, and this is my test adjuster. What company are they with? Um, let's say they're with uh, adjusters are us. And you can put in their address. With, uh, if they happen to have a suite, maybe they're in suite 202, you can put in their, their city. And all their information. We have room for lots of information in here. What's their work telephone number? You can put in their cell phone number. Of course, fax number. You can even put in their email address here. Let's just do test at adjuster.com. Um, what time zone are they on? Okay, that could be important. You don't want to, you know, maybe you have an adjuster that's actually um, over on the West Coast and, and you know, because I'm on the East Coast. On the West Coast, there's a three-hour time difference. You want to know that. What is their primary language? And what type of claims do they handle? Click a drop down here and here are different claims. So let's choose, um, let's say, liability. And here's where you can put in your remarks. Anything pertaining to this adjuster. Maybe I always need to know that I always need to call them on their cell phone first. Okay, so we're going to do um, always try cell phone first. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Do I want to save changes? Yes, I do. And here we go. And you can keep adding in here. They'll just keep lining up here. And if you have over three, which would, which is the amount that would be displayed here, it would have a scroll bar and you can keep going. So if there's multiple adjusters on this claim, you can put in as many as you need to. You also see here we have this little box here next to email. That means I can access an email screen and it will pull this address over and I can email right from this screen if I need to. Now the last tab that we have here for claims is claim parties. Okay, do I want to add a new claim party? And of course, claim parties are the ones that are involved, you know, uh, in the claim. So we can go ahead in here and I'm going to put in a party test. And do they happen to be with some type of company? Here, by the way, you have what's called a little ampersand. When you click on this, this accesses our Rolodex within the software, which Rolodex was covered in another training session. It accesses our Rolodex and I can choose people listed in my Rolodex. Do I want to choose a Rolodex company? Can I want to choose a lien holder, certificate holder? I can do that and I'll do it so you can see it. I'll hit OK. As you see, it automatically pulled that information over from the Rolodex. Again, we can go ahead and put in uh, phone numbers here. You know, if there's any phone numbers for this claim, this party in, that's involved, what relationship is this person to the claimant? Let's say it's, you know, itself, it's that person. Are they the claimant? What was the amount of loss? Is there some type of amount of loss here? Say it was 500. Here again, you have places for email address and for remarks. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Do I want to save changes? Yes, I can. And of course, I can go ahead and add more. I click on Add New, and I can go ahead and add in another one. So you can keep on adding, you know, and you can change the relationship. Maybe there happened to have been three people in the car when something happened. You can choose a relationship for them. If I ever have to choose other, you know, just go ahead and put in the remarks who that other is. What type of relationship is it? Maybe it's, you know, maybe they're actually driving and their boss was in the car or something like that. You can put all that information in here.
Now when you're on these different tabs, you can go ahead head up to the top here and I can click on edit. So I'm on this claim part, I can click on edit, it brings it back up and I can edit it. I can also choose to delete it. It does give me a warning because you know delete is permanent. If I delete it, it's gone. The only way to get it back is to manually enter it myself and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to answer no here. Okay. We can also select forms and images here to print email or fax, a little shortcut for you. I'll scroll that over. There you go. We also have here what is called a claim summary. It's, it's a, a report or a printout of a summary of everything you've entered here in the claim section. So let's do claim summary. And here it goes. It opens it right up. I'm going to just enlarge it so you can read it a little bit bigger. Here's our claim summary. As you see, it has all the information I have entered. My policy, my claim number, type, coverage, all that. Here's my amount salvaged, my amount reserved. Let's scroll down. There's my adjuster. Here's my claim party. It informs me that I have a form attached to this. Okay, and here's my, my form that's attached. I didn't put in a description for my form, so it's blank in the date it was attached. I also have an image attached here, so it tells me I have an image attached. Now, this claim summary happens to only be one page. It's because I have the information I have in here only fills one page, but if you have more information, it will increase the page sizes. So you see this is a report that will give you all the information you have just listed in the claim section. Okay, so you can always access this claim summary at any time, print it out, whatever you need to do with it. I'm going to go ahead and hit return here. And now that's our claim section. As you see, we have room for a lot of different information. Um, Let's go back to the claim info tab here. So as I said before, just to show you now that I'm finished showing you how to enter a new one, if I want to see my next claim or a different claim, I simply select it and you see the information has changed on it. Okay, and I can go ahead and change information on it. Maybe I want to actually now put in a claim number. I click on update and it saves the changes. I answer yes. And I can add a memo and I'm going to add a memo that I changed the claim number so that I know that in my claim progress there and hit OK and you'll see if I click on claim progress it was put there change claim number here it is change claim number let's go back to claim info now do you want it you can close a claim if you need to you can reopen it and you can void it from here as I said voiding you cannot unvoid a claim you cannot reopen it you can reopen a closed one so let's go ahead and close this one I'm gonna hit unclosed okay claim claim number is about to be closed you want to proceed yes and we're just going to go ahead and put in a memo. I'm going to do a closed claim so that I know I did it. And now it's closed. I'm also allowed now to reopen it. I can click on reopen. Do you wish to reopen this? Yes. Okay, I'm going to just put a note in here that I reopened claim this morning. Received call from uh, let's say the I received a call from the insurance company. That's why I'm reopening it. I'm going to hit OK and now it's reopened. Again, as I said, if you void it, you cannot reopen it. So let's click on void and it tells you here the claim now, the claim and the number is about to be voided. Do you want to proceed? Once it is voided, it cannot be modified. Okay, so if I answer yes, you can go ahead and put in this voided. Uh, no longer good. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's been voided and up here it tells you the claim has been voided. All right, I'm going to switch back over to the other claim. Just to point out to you, up here on the top here where it says open claim number reported on this date. We always give you right here just a brief little description of what, of what you're on here on when it comes to the claim. So if I switch back to voided, it tells me it was a voided claim, the claim number and it was what date it was reported on. So I can just look up there briefly to see which claim I'm on if I don't know for sure which one I want to look at. Okay, uh, that pretty much sums up our claim, our claim section. I hope you like it. And everybody have a great day. Uh, as you see, this is a recorded webinar, so feel free to view this as many times as you need to. Again, any questions you might have, feel free to contact us. It's always uh, very easy, though, to also do email us, or we also have a, a live chat available on our website where you can also contact our product support from there. All right, everybody have a great day and take care.